Before we get going, we're giving away a $50 Amazon gift card to a subscriber that comments on this video. And for at least a while, we're going to be doing it on every video. So subscribe and comment on all of them. Emotional trauma. Obviously, not something any of us ever want to deal with, but an inevitable part of life, unfortunately. You'll often hear victims of emotional trauma say that they feel physical pain. Whether it be sickness or aching of the muscles or stiffness of the joints, there's a wide range of physical reactions that can go alongside emotional trauma. But why? Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Waste Time, we ask the question, why does physical illness often accompany emotional trauma? In order for this to make sense, we have to explain the limbus system, a system in the brain comprised of a set of brain structures that don't actually form any specific system itself, but rather a combination of systems that all work towards several specific functions. The limbic system is responsible for emotion, behavior, motivation, long-term memory, and smell. Not like whether or not you smell good or bad, but rather what you smell. Parts of it also regulate various chemicals and can stimulate an interface with basically every part of your brain, including the central nervous system. The nervous system will actually work to attempt to mirror what's going on with the limbic system. And no, not one to one, it's literally like, I'm going to do exactly the same thing the limbic system is doing. However, they work in a sort of symbiotic manner, for lack of a better word, being they're part of the same organism. You wouldn't really call two parts of the same whole sympathetic to one another on account they are not acting independently. And it's not necessarily because specifically that lack of independence they act in a coordinated manner, but obviously we have to talk about these systems coordinating with one another, otherwise none of this makes sense. So let's talk about feelings. What are feelings? What are emotions? Well, if one is particularly reductive and just wants to speak in scientific terms, then feelings and emotions are reactions to various chemicals changing levels in the body. Control chemicals essentially dictate what feeling we're feeling, and a lot of particularly cold people view this as a justification for not engaging in anything that is not material. However, the human experience is not just one of a bunch of chemicals being shook up from time to time. But again, for the sake of simplification and the ability to actually explain these concepts, we have to keep that in mind. It makes sense to make caveats so that people understand that there's more information while at the same time satisfying the need for simplification. This is an internet video, not a scientific lecture. Okay, so chemicals cause feelings, and those chemicals are regulated by things that exist within the limbus system. So let's again simplify. Let's say physical illness is specifically feeling like you have to vomit and or possibly actually vomiting. The part of the brain that would specifically cause this is called the hypothalamus. Now the hypothalamus is essentially the link from the nervous system to the endocrine system. The nervous system being the system that interprets all signals that are transferred back and forth, basically to tell your body what's going on with itself and the surrounding area. The endocrine system is the system that releases hormones into your body. When your body has a certain amount of blood sugar, the hypothalamus will tell your body that it needs to excrete a chemical that will make you feel hunger. This will make you crave food. But as you can imagine, this system of signals and the way that it interprets these signals and the way that it excretes hormones can also produce different results. Let's say you're in a situation that produces an incredibly high stress level. All these systems will react and release cortisol into your system, which is a chemical related to blood sugar and insulin and those types of things that will most likely make you feel sick. But that's even a more specific reaction. If we generalize back out to the limbus system, there exists a possibility of an overload. Again, for lack of a better term. Let's say your body goes through such a shock, it doesn't realize it has to digest food that is sitting in your stomach. Maybe you just ate or earlier you ate a particularly large meal. There's something in there and your body's doing nothing with it. This may cause other parts of your body to say, hey, this shouldn't be here. At least not if we're not going to do anything with it. Time to puke. Now, it's really important to recognize that these systems are not just there to mess with us. These are things that evolved to give us an edge in a situation where we have to choose between fight or flight. That reaction 
perception has to depend on certain feelings that we have, and having the capacity to act on the perception that there is indeed a threat depends specifically on these systems. So, while you might think it's annoying to puke because something bad happened, it's also probably one of the reasons why we're here. These same systems also cause all of the positive reactions we have in life. When something makes you feel good, it's the same systems releasing different chemicals at different doses into your body. Basically, to simplify, the limbic system, while interfacing with the nervous system, may kind of just nope out of everything. We oftentimes don't take emotional trauma as seriously as we should, on account we have bodies that were evolved to literally react in a way that preserves our survival. If our body is doing something as a result of emotional trauma, it's much better to pay attention to than to try to act as though there's nothing going on. That's not to say these are perfect systems. One could easily say that the ability to faint is not the most sought after talent among people, but the fact is our ability to faint is something that can protect us from severe pain. For instance, if there's no time to use an anesthetic and an operation needs to happen, you may end up just fainting because holy hell, everything has broken loose. It's not just physical trauma you experience from a surgery like that, there is an emotional trauma associated and your body itself can say, hey, we can't stay here for this, we need to check out, this is too much. You could easily say that the less severe but still pretty severe physical illness that we were speaking about earlier the vomiting specifically, is kind of somewhere between normal and gonna pass out. And like I said, physical illness can take many different forms. It's not just puking your brains out. But if you ask me, this provides a very good argument for spending time working through emotional trauma that you've experienced through life. When we let these kinds of things stack up, the potential for that physical release of the emotional stress continues to get higher. Ultimately, people like to make jokes about the word triggered and all of that, but if we're going to be entirely frank, this is what that is. Evolution created the trigger, so to speak, and that in of itself should reveal the imperfections in the system as many can get pretty emotionally messed up from things that are not necessarily that big of a deal. But if somebody has negative physical reactions to any event, it's not just that they're sensitive. That's not how that works. And again, who are we to define emotional trauma? PTSD can be caused from quite a few different things, and if the reaction is physical illness, and we, scientifically speaking, actually do know why, it makes sense to apply this knowledge and attempt to make the world better. Because we're never going to be able to stop trauma for certain. It's going to be something that follows humanity around for the entirety of its existence. So it would make sense to understand it. If you have anything to add, please do so in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. And if you're not subscribed, now would be a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos all the time, and the best way to see them first is a subscription. As always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at FalconTheHero, and we'll see you next time right here on Waste Time.